Hello my friends, how are you? It's Brother Ray here. I'm here with our local church pastor, Pastor Stephen Rajan. Thank you so much for coming on today so we can make a discussion video about how Christ is important to us, especially in these times today. I really appreciate you taking time out. I know you have a busy schedule for coming on, so welcome and thank you for being here with us today. Um, I want to get right into it because there's a lot happening in the world today especially according to what we see happening in Matthew 24. Matthew 24 reveals clearly to us what gonna happen in the last days. And as we see what's happening in the last days, what should Christians be doing right now, especially in these times? Mm. Uh, welcome. First of all, I want to thank you, Brother Ray, mm -hmm. for inviting me to be here. It's been a blessing so far. You've been a blessing in our church. Uh, your family is a blessing to each one of us as well. So I want to thank you especially for inviting me here today. It's a very important question as mm -hmm. we are seeing today. Uh, what should we do as a Christian? Like, uh, what are we supposed to do? The very first and the foremost important thing, I would like to bring up a verse before I go to the book of Matthew 24. Mm -hmm. I would like to read a verse from the book of James chapter 1 verse 5. Mm -hmm. The Bible mentions that in James 1 verse 5, this is a very crucial verse for, especially for us living in the last days. Mm -hmm. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, the Bible is asking us, mm -hmm. let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upgradeth not, and it shall be given him. Mm -hmm. So the very first and the foremost thing I would encourage everybody to ask God for wisdom because we will be deceived. The very first thing that Jesus mm -hmm. said in Matthew 24, verse 4, let no man deceive mm -hmm. you. Well, deception comes in a very subtle way. Mm -hmm. But how can we discern if we don't ask God for wisdom? Mm -hmm. So I would encourage, the Bible also says, be rooted and grounded in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. The most essential thing. So we got to be rooted and grounded. So we need to have the heavenly wisdom and also especially the Bible says in Philippians 4 to pray be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer let your requests be made known unto God so I would encourage the very first and foremost thing is to ask God for wisdom asking God for discernment asking God for giving the encouragement to overcome our difficulties mm -hmm. because there are a lot of deceptions happening in the world mm -hmm. so the first thing I would encourage be rooted and grounded in the Word of God but we don't understand the scriptures so we need wisdom so that we could understand the scripture in the way that Christ taught us so we can discern right from wrong Perfect. I like that answer pastor and we ask for wisdom by praying and asking God to give us wisdom correct right yes so that's how we ask now you mentioned Matthew 24 and you mentioned that Jesus told us beware of false prophets but he just didn't mention it once there mm -hmm. he mentioned it three times so definitely we see that this has to be an issue in the last days especially and God wants us to be aware of how you mentioned deceptions can come in so much subtle forms because Jesus said it multiple times beware mm -hmm. of false prophets I think he even said it in Matthew 6 or Matthew 7. He said it there too as well. But to stress beware of false prophets at least three times in a chapter shows that as we approach the last days, deception will be so uh, rampant that we really have to be connected to God. So we need that wisdom as you were mentioning. Now, so how important is it to keep our eyes on Jesus. I don't know if you want to go to Matthew 24 before we mm -hmm. go to the next question. Yes, I do have another verse that I would like to share before I go to the next question. Mm -hmm. So if you look up to the Matthew 24, mm -hmm. so right after when I said Matthew 24 verse 4 mm -hmm. earlier, take heed that let no man deceive you, mm -hmm. the next verse says, for many shall come in my name mm -hmm. saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. many. So right out, right away, Christ says mm -hmm. about deception. Yeah, you hear about wars and rumors of wars. Everything comes later on. Mm -hmm. But the very first thing is about deception. And in the very end days, Satan's crowning act mm -hmm. will be he will impersonate Christ himself. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus 
created us, we are his crowning act of creation. Mm-hmm. Human beings are crowning out of God's creation. But Satan, he turns himself mm-hmm. he, as a crowning act of God's creation. He wants to deceive the crowning act. Mm-hmm. And he wants to deceive as many as possible. Mm-hmm. He says, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Mm-hmm. And what shall he do? The Bible thus mentions in verse 26 of the same chapter, it says, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Mm-hmm. Why? In verse 24 it says, For there shall arise false Christ mm-hmm. and false prophets, shall show you great signs and wonders, inasmuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Mm-hmm. So Christ warned us very clearly. And uh, one of the acts that Satan is also going to do in the book of Revelation, as we see, one of the other acts, before we go to the next question, I, would, I, I wanted to share this as mm-hmm. well. In Revelation chapter 16, verse number 14, mm-hmm. the Bible says, For they are the spirits of devils performing miracles. or working miracles mm-hmm. which go out unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Mm-hmm. So what we see here is Satan is trying to deceive us. Mm-hmm. There are two great deceptions that he's going to do. One of them is immortality of soul. The second is a Sabbath deception. Mm-hmm. With this two deception, he's going to come and impersonate Christ himself. Mm-hmm. And he would say, the Sabbath has been changed and I represent your loved ones. There'll be so many familiar spirits who will be going around the world. Your dead loved ones are going to come and say, they're going to comfort you. They would say the Sabbath has been changed and they will deceive. So the greatest deception, the two great deceptions in the last days, Mm -hmm. as the Bible mentions, Satan is going to come like Christ. Mm -hmm. He's going to deceive with two deceptions. Mm -hmm. One is the Sabbath has been changed from Saturday Mm -hmm. to Sunday. And then is the immortality of soul. Mm-hmm. Those, in other words, three great deceptions mm-hmm. as we see here. Satan changing into Christ. But, and then we see the other two deceptions as well. I like that answer. I like that. Perfect. I like the way you explained that. And before we jump to the next mm-hmm. question, you said something that really I think we should address as well. Because a lot of people, when you mention Satan... They think of a beast or a, mm. or a creature with horns, yes, yes. a goatee, a yes. cape, red face. Mm-hmm. But the Bible says that Satan can transform himself into an angel of light. Absolutely. So when he was cast out of heaven, mm-hmm. he wasn't changed into no creature that looks like that. He still has this beautiful form. Mm-hmm. So, And what he does is that he presents these images of what people he wants people to think the devil looks like mm-hmm. so when he will reveal himself people would be amazed to see how a beautiful angel and he can deceive them just by them th- thinking that this is Christ yes exactly so and there's know, another verse as yes well go, ahead, says, go ahead uh, in, in the book of Matthew itself mm-hmm. what is he trying to do mm-hmm. in Matthew 24 mm-hmm. if it says In Matthew 24, uh, the last verse we just read, Matthew 24, 24. Mm -hmm. If it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Mm -hmm. Now, Satan will come in a form of Christ. He Mm -hmm. came, he tempted Jesus in Matthew 4. He came as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. Now, but here is the concept, a very important thing. The way Jesus comes, he cannot fully impersonate Christ. Correct. And here is the difference very clearly. The Bible mentions in Matthew 4 that Satan twisted the words of Jesus, Mm -hmm. the words in the Bible. So I'm going to give an explanation very quickly. So how important that could be also answering the next question as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, How important is to keep our eyes focused on Jesus? Amen. Amen. To focus on Jesus is to focus on his word. Amen. So in Matthew 4, Mm -hmm. The Bible mentions that the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness. But here is a very important thing. Um, If you look at here, in verse 6, Matthew 4, verse 6, And he said unto him, this is the second temptation, 
if thou be the son of God, cast thyself mm -hmm. for it is written. Mm -hmm. Satan is quoting the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Now he is quoting, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at thy any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Mm -hmm. Now, the, did he quote all of the verse? No. That's an important question. Mm -hmm. Wrong. Psalm 91, verse 11, mm -hmm. verse number 12. So the Bible says, and he shall give his angels charge over thee mm -hmm. to keep thee in all thy ways. That words were omitted by Satan. Mm -hmm. He did not say all thy ways. He simply said, oh, come on, jump yes. off the cliff. The angels will protect you. My friends, that's presumptuous. Right. Jesus knew right from wrong. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you today. The most important thing, Satan will come and impersonate and claim to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. But here's a four important thing that I would like you to understand. How can we not be deceived by his deception? Well, number one, the Bible mentions in Isaiah 820, to the law and to the testimony. If you speak not according to this word, there is no light. The word light means there's no truth in them. Mm -hmm. So what is the important truth? The Bible says, let no man deceive you. How can we not be deceived? Here's a verse that I would like to share. In, in Acts chapter 1, how is Jesus is going to come? So in Acts chapter 1, the Bible mentions in Acts chapter 1 and verse number 11. So the Bible mentions in Acts 1 verse 11, which also said, this is angels are speaking mm -hmm. to the Galileans, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye up gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Mm -hmm. He says, the angels are saying, he will come in like manner. Same. The manner he went was literal. The Bible says, mm -hmm. everybody saw him. Mm -hmm. Revelation 1, 7 says, every eye shall see him. That's right. And the Bible says that a cloud took him. And then everybody heard when he went. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, he will come with a right. shout. Mm -hmm. So we see all these verses. Right. And Psalm 50 says, when he comes, he comes with a glorious and a fire about him, a tempestuous around about mm -hmm. him. So we see four ways. He's going to come literally, audibly, visibly, gloriously. And Satan cannot counteract his full coming. He'll be walking around. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, Christ's feet won't touch the earth. Amen. We're going to meet the Lord in the air. So, mm -hmm. as we see here, what should a Christian do? Let's be rooted and grounded in the Word of God so that we won't be deceived. Amen. So, so that brings up another thing. This yes. is what I like about the discussion. It flows. Yes. So, just to clarify, there will be no secret rapture. Yes. Because that's a big thing we see everyone is talking mm -hmm. about a secret rapture. But if if you want to share on that, I know Thessalonians yes. talk about that very well. There is no secret rapture because you just said, and according to scripture, as we know, it will be audible. Mm -hmm. It will be loud. Yes. The, the Bible says that the, the, the there will be earthquakes. Right. And, so yes. there is no secret rapture. I don't know if you want to talk on that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I want to share something, a verse, a common verse that's been taken mm -hmm. out of context with all my believers, my friends, I have so many friends who say this verse. Mm -hmm. The common text about secret rapture comes from Matthew chapter 24. Mm -hmm. Matthew 24 and verse number 40 and 41. The Bible says here like this, Then shall two be in the field, yes. one shall be mm -hmm. taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Now here is the verses that the Bible says, to men and to women, mm -hmm. and there one is taken and the other left. Mm -hmm. But here is the concept of these verses. When you read a Bible verse, you always go back to the context. Correct. If I say to my brother, Brother Ray, I'll give you a hundred million dollar, but I just left you hanging. I'm like, he told me he's going to give me a hundred million dollars. Man, I wish I could get a hundred million dollar right now, put it into ministry. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, but how do I get it? That's like, right. He didn't tell me where to go. He didn't tell me how to get it. He simply said, and then he left. And right. then he's not even picking my call anymore. Right. What's up with him? Like, you're confused about yes. me. I'm like, I don't know whether you'll trust me anymore. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I'm not giving him any context. I just said, I'll give you money, and then I left mm -hmm. to India. And I never called you back. Like, that is, that is like so discouraging. Right. You don't know what's happening. Now, if I told you all the details, Correct. what happened, how to get it, and everything, you'll be comfortable to go and mm -hmm. get it. But friends, this verses is not just they're taking out of context mm -hmm. look at the verse before look at the verse after look at verse 37 i will read from 36 onwards mm -hmm. but of that day talking of the second coming of jesus mm -hmm. but of that day and the hour knoweth no man not the angels of heaven but my father only but as in the days of noah where so mm -hmm. shall also the coming of son of man be for as in the days of that they were before they were, the flood, mm -hmm. they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered mm -hmm. into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall mm -hmm. two be in the field, one be taken That's right. and the other left. Right. So the context is about Noah's mm -hmm. days. Noah was preparing a, a big ark and God told him to build it. And, but people were eating and drinking. Nothing wrong with eating. I'm right. hungry. Right. And I like to eat. Well, I want to go out and work. Nothing wrong in working. Nothing wrong in marrying or giving in marriage. Mm -hmm. But if your house is on fire, you won't be sitting and eating salad. That's right. You got to run <laughs> exactly. away. Exactly. Save exactly. yourself. My exactly. Friends, the spiritual realities become so numbified. Mm -hmm. they, they were so insensitive towards the eternal reality. Today, same thing as it says, as in the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of Son of Man be. So just as they were not realizing the eternal reality, so will the coming of Son of Man be. Mm -hmm. So one taken, which simply means they responded to go into the ark, and they went and they were saved. The other person did not go. It's simply as, as it is. It's nothing to do with secret rapture. Right. It's the context of Noah. They were all surprised. But is it really surprised? Noah preached for 120 years. It right. wasn't surprising for them. But it was surprised to believe that what he preached really happened. Correct. Yes. Now, you, yes. We, you, we just opened up a can of worms here with this, with this, with this topic. Yes. The other thing to note about what mm -hmm. we just read is that these are symbolic. It's a symbolic verse. Because a woman is a representation of a church. So we see it says two women in the field. It doesn't mean two literal women are in the field. But it's talking about the two churches. There's two kind of churches in the field right now. Doing you have the true church and the false church. The question is which church will be taken and which church will be left. So woman according to scripture, according to the Bible is a symbol of church. So this is a symbolic text. But people look at it a certain way. And as you mentioned, they pull that and push it into this rapture scenario. Mm -hmm. They're misinterpreting the whole scripture mm -hmm. to suit their own, I would say, teaching or the indoctrination that they're getting. Yes. I don't know if you want to touch on that. Very, very good. Uh, there are two applications for that as well. Right. One is uh, symbolic application. Mm -hmm. The other is also literal application mm -hmm. as well. Like there are people who will be saved. Right. There are people who will be lost. Mm -hmm. There's a church that is going to be saved, mm -hmm. a church is going to be lost. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a clear interpretation of right. that verses. Mm -hmm. But along with what you said, I want to also read another verse okay. before I answer the other question. Okay. I want to finish up with the secret rapture doctrine. Yes. Now in in Second Peter chapter three, the Bible mentions about Second Peter chapter three. Mm -hmm. Here some people do say that the, Jesus is going to come as a thief in the night. But, but take a look at this verse, my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and some people also say that when he comes, uh, there's another theory called as a set up a thousand years of, yes. uh, of peace on earth. Right. But here's this verse says that looking f verse 12, mm -hmm. uh, verse 10 onwards, it says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in, the in which? The which the heavens shall pass away, with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Mm -hmm. So it is very clear that Jesus is not going to set up a peace, 
piece of earth mm -hmm. for a thousand years. Yeah. When he comes, the earth is going to be burnt up, the heavens are going to pass away, and his coming is going to be a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. Like just as the flood came and took them all away, Jesus' second coming is going to be a sudden surprise. Mm -hmm. But again, you don't need to be worried. A thief is not going to come and say, hey, today I'm going to come to your home. Right. You got to be ready at all times. That's right. And that's what Jesus is talking about here. And you go ahead. You now, now I, I also like the verse in Thessalonians. Yes, let's go. Where there. it says, uh -huh. that's where I'm going. I think it's, um, what is that? Uh, Second Thessalonians? Uh, where, where it says how God will come. Um, so... Uh, so, but be, the, the point is, the point of why we're making this point is that because the 1,000 years of peace, and that's mm -hmm. why I was going to Thessalonians, is because you cannot have 1,000 years of peace if God is going to destroy the earth when he mm -hmm. comes. Yes. Like you mentioned, there's going to be a destruction. Yes. He's not going to touch the ground. He's Correct. not going to touch the earth. The, the, he'll be opening. Graves will be opening. There'll be the, the Bible says that uh, let's read it. Let's read yes. it. Yes. You want to go ahead, brother? Yes. So this verse comes from first second Thessalonians mm -hmm. chapter one. Mm -hmm. I'll read from verse seven onwards. Mm -hmm. It says, And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Mm -hmm. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with those mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Mm -hmm. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with the everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So it's very, very clear mm -hmm. that there will be no thousand years of peace. Right. Because when Jesus comes, what there's something called as universalism. I'm not going to point out any churches mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Something called as universalism, mm -hmm. where every person on earth will be saved mm -hmm. that's what universalism means but here the bible says at the presence of the lord every person all the wicked persons will be destroyed correct so there will be no peace on earth correct when jesus comes in revelation 6 17 says for the great day of the lord has come exactly who shall be able, able to, to stand, stand against right. his wrath mm -hmm. the answer is nobody except that's the right. righteous correct will be able to stand and say in Isaiah 25 verse 9, this is our God whom mm -hmm. we will be glad in his salvation. Mm -hmm. So we are very clear about, so there is no secret rapture. Mm -hmm. There's a thousand years of peace. Mm -hmm. All these are man-made doctrines. Right, and then the Bible also says, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Correct. And they who are alive will remain and shall be caught Correct. up to meet the Lord in the air, and Correct. so shall they ever be with the Lord. Yes. But if the Bible says the dead in Christ will rise first, and the righteous who remain will be caught up, it means that those who are not found righteous will be struck down. So there That's can't right. be any 1,000 years of peace That's right. on earth. That's right. That is absolutely correct. And those verses we just uh, read in Second Thessalonians and First Thessalonians mm -hmm. four also it mentions right. that mm -hmm. we will meet the Lord in the air. Correct. So it's very clear and obvious that there is all these man-made doctrines mm -hmm. are giving us like a second chance of hope. Correct. But we don't need to be deceived. Mm -hmm. The Bible is our only safeguard. Right. It can be rooted and grounded so that we don't need to be misled mm -hmm. by these false teachings. And as you mentioned, now you see how all this ties back to Matthew 24, where yes. God said, beware of false prophets. Correct. Because all this is false teachings yes. to make, the devil uses this because he wants us to get comfortable in our sin. Yes. So we think that is a second chance for us to be saved, but he's actually leading us mm -hmm. to be lost. That's yes, true. This is why we have to, like you said, ask for wisdom. Yes. This is how it's all tying in together. Correct. Because that's what God is, how he reveals the word to us and how he reveals the deception when you ask for wisdom knowledge and understanding God guides you in his word to show you the truth absolutely and the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free absolutely free from sin free into everlasting life amen amen now and go on if there's in. another verse as well in first Timothy chapter 4 verse mm -hmm. 1 the Bible mentions about a very interesting thing. Mm -hmm. Now the Spirit speaketh expressively mm -hmm. that in the latter times, right now we're talking about the end time mm -hmm. events, 
So in the last days, the Bible says, some shall depart from the faith. Mm -hmm. Now, the faith that Jesus taught us, mm -hmm. faith comes by hearing the word of Amen. God in Romans 10, 17. Yes. People will depart from the plain, simple faith. Mm -hmm. And what would they do? Giving heed to the seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. So there's 1,000 years of peace and talking about the seven year tribulation, the rapture. talking about the rapture, mm -hmm. all these are doctrines, doctrines of, of devils. devils. Amen. So we don't need to be deceived, mm -hmm. let us simply heed to the Word of God. And I let's like be that. grounded in the Word of God, as simple as it is, asking God for wisdom, mm -hmm. an increase of faith and courage, and to stand for the right though the heavens fall. Powerful, powerful. I love how this is going so far and we didn't even get to... That's just the yes. first question. Yes. But you see, when you're studying the Bible, it's Amen. so deep that... You, this is why we study the Bible line upon line, yes. precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. And Amen. the Bible reveals itself to us. Amen. We're not adding anything to the Scriptures. Yes. We're just showing you what the Scriptures says and it shows you how the Bible itself connects the dot. Now, Amen. the next question is, how important yes. is it for us to keep our eyes on Jesus every day, seeing that we're hearing all of these things. Yes. Now, it has to be a spiritual walk every day to be connected mm -hmm. with Christ because every day the devil has a mission. And we should, mm -hmm. I always mention him that he's a defeated foe. But he has a mission to deceive us and to take us off the path. Mm -hmm. So how is it that how is it important that we should keep our eyes on Jesus every day? Absolutely. It's a very important thing, especially in the last days. Even right now, the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 mm -hmm. that be sober because your adversary, the, the devil, devil, is like a roaring mm -hmm. lion. Mm -hmm. And the Bible also says in Revelation 12, is the accuser of the, the brethren. brethren. So what he does, there are four deceptions of the devil. He comes to mm -hmm. us in four different ways. It's good to know that what the enemy does. Mm -hmm. Number one, he comes with pleasure. He comes with pleasures of this world. The Bible does mention that. Number two, cares of his life. Mm -hmm. He comes with the pleasure. If he can't win you with the pleasure, he comes you with the thing called struggles of the life. Mm -hmm. You are so bogged down that you have no time for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Your cares of his life. And you go down to the third one. You have your problems with yourself. Mm -hmm. You are so sinful that you don't want to look up to Jesus. And lastly, problems with others. Mm -hmm. So there's four deceptions. You talk about others. I don't want to go to church because Brother Ray is this mm -hmm. and this and this. I don't want to go to church because I am this, this right. and this. Or my pleasures are bogging me down. Mm -hmm. All the worldly cares. Mm -hmm. So all these four things are keeping you away. Mm -hmm. Satan is not like a lion coming to devour us. Literally, in a sense, is the angel of light. Mm -hmm. He can trap us in such a way that even the elect will be deceived, the Bible mm -hmm. says. So he doesn't come with us with a pitchfork and all of that. Yes. He comes with a more subtle way. Yes. So how can we keep our minds focused on Jesus? Mm -hmm. The Bible mentions several verses in the Bible. I would like to go to the book of Titus, mm -hmm. if you will. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Here, I, I would like to read several verses here, but mainly a couple of verses about uh, what Titus is mentioning here. Here, Titus, as a young pastor, mm -hmm. is actually left in a place called Crete, and he has been pastoring in this church. Mm -hmm. But these people are very unruly people. These people are very uh, worldly-minded people. They are confused. Mm -hmm. The Bible does mention how they are. They are blasphemous, they are mm -hmm. drunkards, and they are adulterers, and so forth and so on. Three times Paul mentions to Titus. It says in Titus chapter 1, I want to read Titus 1, 8. He says the word sober. Sober, yes. In Titus chapter 2, verse number 2, he says, be sober. In Titus chapter 2, verse number, if you look four. at verse number 11, mm -hmm. uh, verse number 4 as well, mm -hmm. be sober. Verse 11 to 14, I would like to read this. Mm -hmm. For the grace of God that appeared, so the, for the grace of God that brings salvation that appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness, worldly lust, and we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Why? Looking for that blessed hope, 
the glorious appearing of the great God and the Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, we are living in a, in a wicked, evil mm-hmm. world. Now, this is Paul's writing for Titus long time ago. He's saying, you got to live soberly, buddy. you got to live righteously, mm-hmm. godly in this present evil world. Because we are looking for that blessed hope, mm-hmm. for the glorious appearing. Look at verse number 14. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good work. Mm-hmm. Look at verse 15 especially. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority, that no man deceive thee mm-hmm. and despise thee. Now, three things I would like to mention here. Paul mentions three things. How to communicate your message. He says, speak. Some people, you can simply talk to them. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk a lot to Brother Ray. He just gets it. Some people, we got to exhort, which means warn people. Mm -hmm. Some people, you got to rebuke. Right. With all authority. Right. So here, how important is it to keep our eyes on Jesus? It's crucial because if we don't keep our eyes on Jesus, not be sober-minded, living righteously and godly in this evil world, we might miss Mm -hmm. our heaven. That's right. We might miss heaven. It's very important because the devil is going around like a roaring lion. He wants to destroy us as much as possible. So it's time for us to be sober yes. and not drunk with false doctrines. Yes. As we see what the woman in Revelation 13 is doing, mm. she's the mother of harlots and have the false doctrines mm. and drunk with the false doctrines we need to be sober studying the word of god so it can be we can have a sober life a godly life a righteous life in christ yeah absolutely well there are two applications don't be drunk with literal (laughs) that's right that's right don't be drunk with spiritual correct that's right right. that's it that's right paul mentions to timothy in verse 2 chapter 2 verse Mm -hmm. 2 Sober, great, and temperate, sound in faith. Correct. In charity and in patience. It's very important that we don't drunk physically. Correct. That I, that I, my family members who drank, drank to death, had pneumonias, and they lost yes. their mind. They became insane. They can't even know what is right from wrong. Right. So if you're indoctrinated with literal wine, right. you lose your mind. Like we saw Noah, he lost his Correct. mind. You saw Abraham. Uh, uh, Other examples in the Bible. Yes. All through Lots. the Bible, Lot. Yes. He lost his mind. All through the scriptures, we saw people losing their mind because of drinking. But then, on a, let's pitch in a little help yes. you get there. Yeah. Because the Bible says, wine is a mocker, strong right. drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Is wise. And we want to be wise. Exactly. So, don't even risk it because you yes. it can take hold of you yes. that's why and i heard a pastor said once and i like the way he said it when you pass those stores it says wine and spirits okay what kind of spirits is it yeah. <laughs> it can't be good yeah, spirits strange spirits strange spirits yes. Yes. so you want to be careful yes. that you don't indoctrinate yourself with the false doctrines and also with the wine that can turn yes. you away from Christ, that absolutely. can mess up your sober, sober mind. Absolutely, it goes both the ways. Correct. One is literal, one mm-hmm. is spiritual. Right. Don't be indoctrinated by spiritual doctrines, mm-hmm. which will lead you away. The Bible says, "Have sound in faith. Be sound in faith." Amen. Yes. So now that we're talking about Jesus, yes. and we're informing people about Jesus and what Jesus can do in our yes. lives and in their lives. How do we know Jesus? Mm-hmm. How do we get to know this guy? This mm-hmm. guy could, that can transform us and can keep us from being deceived mm-hmm. and can guide us and lead us into all truth. Absolutely. How do we know him? The, the best way the Bible says in John chapter 5, how do we know Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. It's, a very important, it's a very important thing. How do I know Jesus? In John chapter 5, the Bible mentions in verse 39, it says, search the scriptures, mm-hmm. for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify, testify of me. If you want to know more about Christ, mm-hmm. the best way to know is to search the scriptures. Because this is not a suggestion, mm-hmm. it's a command. Correct. Jesus says, come on, search the scriptures, for in them you have eternal life. That's one way to know mm-hmm. that you can search the scriptures. 
There's another way how to know Jesus, especially as well. In 1 John chapter 2, verse number 3, how do I know Jesus as well? How do I know Jesus? Mm-hmm. 1 John, two, first John two. chapter 2, and we're reading verse number 3. Mm-hmm. 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 3. There are several other verses, but let's just focus the main mm-hmm. verses here. Right. The Bible says, Hereby we do know that we know Him if we, if we keep His commandments. And verse 4 says, He that said, I know Him, keepeth not His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in Him. Mm-hmm. It's very obvious and clear. The one way I know Jesus is by searching the Scriptures. The other way I know him is by keeping his commandments. Mm -hmm. Because that's how, because he is the truth. We just heard it earlier. Truth will set you free from the bondage of sin, from the corruptions of this Mm -hmm. world. So if you know the truth, which is Jesus is the truth, Mm -hmm. the Bible is the truth, the Ten Commandments is the truth, Mm -hmm. Jesus will set you free. Mm -hmm. And what is the result of knowing him? I have a verse as well. Go ahead, brother. How, Go ahead. how do I? And then I have a question for that. Yes, answer. for sure. So what is the result of knowing Jesus? Two verses, mm-hmm. but I like the verse in Job. A very, I like this verse from my childhood. Amen. In Job 22. This is a very, very good verse. Job 22, and we're reading verse number 21. Mm-hmm. The Bible says in Job 22, verse number 21. Uh, this is how it starts. Job 22 and 21 says, Acquaint now thyself with the Lord. In other words, mm-hmm. get to know him yourself and be, be at, peace. at peace. There is no peace in this world. That's right. But if you want to have peace, the best way to have peace, Jesus said, My Amen. peace I live unto you. Amen. Not as the world gives you, but my peace I give unto you. So if you get to know Jesus, the Bible also says, Thereby good shall come, come unto, unto thee. thee. So, and uh, Jeremiah confirms that mm-hmm. in Jeremiah 26, 3 and 4. You will keep him in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on thee. Amen. So, if our minds, if our minds are stayed on Jesus, in Isaiah 26, 3 and 4 says, Thou... Jeremiah. Sorry, Isaiah. Isaiah. Okay. I'm so sorry. Go ahead, it's okay. I I told you twice this yeah, time yeah, this yeah. evening. I'm so excited. I know, that's what it is. There's so many verses. That's what it is. So Isaiah 26, 3 and 4 says, Mm -hmm. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee Mm -hmm. because he trusted in thee. Mm -hmm. Trust thee in the Lord forever for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. So we will have perfect peace. So in Job we saw he'll give you peace if you know him. Mm -hmm. Here it says, if you have your minds on him, Not just peace, it's perfect peace. That's right. Oh, that's very, I don't know about how about it. The Bible says we'll have complete peace. Mm -hmm. Now, we mentioned something that knowing Jesus, and we learn of him in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Um, So basically the question that I want to put in as a sub-question, not a question for that. Uh Someone would say, well, the Bible is such a big book. Yes. Where do I start? Very good Jesus? question. So what's your recommendation of how you would advise someone in reading the Bible to get to know Jesus? Where should they start? Where yes. should they, what's the first book they should go to? Because someone new would say, it's such a big book. I don't know where to start. Mm. It's confusing. So yes. what's your recommendation? I would recommend start anywhere possibly. But if, you, if you're new to the Bible, Start of the Gospels. Mm-hmm. Gospels will be very good. But there are people, some people, I've seen people starting right off back from the book of Genesis mm-hmm. and read it all the way. But I would recommend the book of Gospel of John or Gospel of Matthew, mm-hmm. Mark or Luke. Setting the life of Jesus mm-hmm. will give you a good head start. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would also recommend when you read the Bible, mm-hmm. don't rush it. Right. You take your time. I'll give you a simple illustration to study the Bible. When you read a Bible verse, for instance, I'm going to read one text. Just read one text at mm-hmm. a time. You don't have to rush it. Three simple steps to read the Bible. Observation, interpretation, application. Mm-hmm. And we'll, we'll study that another day, okay. more in depth. To it. Okay. But I just want to give an example. Write down at the verse that you're going to read. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm going to spend John chapter 1, 1 to 12, or just 1 and mm-hmm. 2. 
just write them down and read it, reread it, read it, reread it. And if you can gather the words, oh, what does that mean? In the beginning was the mm -hmm. word. Who is this word? That's right. One of the best ways to read the Bible is to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Ask questions and see what the Bible has to say. The best way to interpret the Bible, let the Bible explain itself. Mm -hmm. The Bible has the answer itself. So when you ask questions, it will explain you. And then ask God, what does that have to do with me that's when right. I wake up on Monday morning? That's right. And that's exactly yes. what we've been doing according to how we've been reading the Bible. Right now, even on this study, on this presentation, we've been reading a verse and then answering that verse with another verse. So that's the same that you should do. Read the verse and then try to answer the verse with another verse. And God will lead you. He will show you the way. But once again, uh, Pastor Stephen, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for sharing all those verses and for making it clear about how people should love Jesus and learn of Jesus because Jesus truly wants to save us. Yes. And he died to save us all. You know, he wants us to be saved. He says it's his will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance and to everlasting life. So please feel free to share your comments, your questions. Pastor Stephen has access to Bible materials for Bible studies. Uh, if you like materials, please let us know so we can provide those materials for you. You also have some videos. I can post those links up in the description of videos that you've already made with yes. Bible topics, right? Yeah, the topics like how to study the Bible. Mm -hmm. We also have like the 20 and fundamental doctrines mm -hmm. and the last Stephen's prophecy study guides as well. Okay, perfect, perfect. So stay in tune, subscribe to our channel to see more videos that will be coming in the future. Please remember to like and share, and always remember that God is always good. So until the next time, this is Brother Ray and Pastor Stephen Rajan. Keep studying. Bye-bye.